Hey everyone, Jason. Welcome back to another video for Marvel United. Um, this is part of the third series, or third season three, uh, the Multiverse Saga. We have World War Hulk. Uh, this is actually going to be a pretty interesting one because we're going to get a lot of heroes and a bunch of anti-heroes. So everyone in here is either a hero or an anti-hero, uh, which is really cool. Um, we get a Hulk as a villain as Gladiator Hulk, or rather World Breaker Hulk. We get new, another new Iron Man uh, Sentry. We got Ares and we got Hercules. Uh, there's also one more character in here. Um, is we do get Doc Samson as well down here. Uh, but Doc Samson is part of the Kickstarter exclusive. Um, so the set, the set itself, World War Hulk, should appear in the retail. Uh, but if you didn't purchase the Kickstarter, it might come, it won't come with the, uh, Doc Samson character. So just keep an eye if you are picking this up in stores that, or if you're ordering this online, to make sure you know if you're getting the retail release or the Kickstarter version with that extra character or not. Um, which is why he doesn't appear on the front of the box, but he does appear on the back because they print off the special one for that. Uh, cool. So we're going to go ahead and hop into what is in here. So let's look at our locations first. So if you're not familiar with the World War Hulk storyline, um, some people might have at least some idea from the uh, cinematic movies, is basically Hulk was causing threats around the you know, globe, as, as the Hulk does. Um, and some of the big wig heroes, Iron Man, uh, Mr. Fantastic, Doctor Strange, uh, a couple of the other guys, decided to um, send Hulk off to a un uninhabited planet, so that, that way, hey, if he's going to be raging around, at least he's not destroying New York, New York every other week. Uh, and that was the idea, and then his ship got sabotaged or damaged, and he landed up on Scar here, which is basically a, um, a combat world. And he ended up becoming a slave into the arena, and he had to fight his way out. Um, and even there, he, even though he landed on this world, he was trapped there, he was basically happy. He was, he became the, the major gladiator. He did stuff, he, he rose above, he took over the planet, essentially. Um, with a group of other people is war bound. Um, and yeah, so it was for him, awesome. Uh, and then somebody detonated his ship, um, ended up killing his, at the time, wife. And that basically, he triggered that, you know, hey, these heroes from Earth betrayed him, they sabotaged him, then they tried to kill him once they saw he was powerful. So they came back to Earth and brought his war with him, his war bound, and it took a lot of powerful heroes to eventually stop him. Uh, so that's kind of the gist of it. All right, so we start with uh, Scar. So on the back of all these, they'll have a little World War Hulk note so we know where they're from. So Scar is the home plant. So this has whenever a hero anywhere uses her discard actions, action tokens, place them here. So that'll be a static ability. End your turn, you may discard one card from your hand of the bottom of your deck to gain two action tokens from this location. Cool. Um, we're also going to get the New York City Arena. Uh, it seems like a weird one for Hulk, but this is during the World War Hulk story when he came to Earth. Um, he's basically like, hey, I'm going to now conquer Earth with my Warbound. Um, and when he kidnapped a bunch of the heroes, this was going to be their gladiatorial arena. Um and make them fight each other like he had to fight other people. So it says, end of the turn, if there are other heroes in this location, you must choose one of them. You both gain one uh, hero or one attack token, and then you must both discard a card. So you have to fight each other. So this is kind of the negative um, abilities to have. And our third location is Battle World. Uh, this fits into the whole multiverse, multiversal scheme uh, of this series is so like uh, Emperor Doom, from the base set, uh, combine a bunch of these different alternate realities together, and one of them still had the World War Hulk uh, era area to it. So it says you may gain one move token to reveal if you reveal is one attack somewhat the bottom of cards in your hand. If you have two or more, you may gain an attack token instead. 
cool. That's kind of neat. Um, neat little ability. Uh, then we're going to get a set of tokens in here. So we have six obedience tokens and a stun token as well. So certain characters will use those. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hop into some of our heroes. We're going to start with hero only cards. Or characters, rather. And we're going to start with Hulk Buster Iron Man. Yeah, we got our big beefy Hulk Buster Iron Man here, which is awesome. Generally piloted by Tony Stark, but you can always pretend there's the MCU Bruce Banner hiding inside. So we got him, we'll set him down there, then we'll go ahead and look at his set of cards. Alright, and there's the back of his picture. If we want to see what see what he looks like, I'm gonna zoom the camera in a little bit for these guys. Alright, so as usual, we have our basic ones we start with. We have Iron Man and his whiskers. Uh extra Hulk Buster. Uh so we have oh yeah, he's just punching someone into the ground there. Um a heroic symbol. He has an attack. Heroic attack. Double attack. So move attack. Move attack. His single wild. His double wild. And then he has his special cards. He's got two copies of the shockwave. Which do double attack against a single target in your location. Or attack a stun token to the uh, villain or henchman in your location. The next turn their bam is cancelled. And the stun token is discarded. So cool. He comes with a big old stun token to help. Uh, stop guys He's got pinned down deal double damage against a single target in location if you damage them They can't leave their location until the end of the next villain turn So Hulk Buster's all about dealing tons of damage and stopping guys And doing stuff and he has damage mitigation mode if you're about to be KO'd during a villain turn You can flip this card face down to avoid discarding your last card. You are not KO'd uh, neat. So you have a way to do it. This card is also a starting hand card. So this will be in your hand at the beginning of the game. So you can play this at any time. Unlike some of the other starting starting cards, which really want you to almost play that as your first action. Because they're like, oh, then you heal every turn or this or that. This you can really save to later. But it's nice to know you have it available. Um, then the next thing we have is the item cards. Or equipment cards. Uh, since we're talked about in the base game, this what they do is they let you, if if a hero has equipment, you can get rid of your wild cards, your double wild, and use these instead. Uh, it just gives you an extra bonus. Some of them are one-time use, some are reusable. Uh, so Hulkbuster Iron Man gets Deflector Shield. So you can use this on your turn. Uh, you can't take any damage till the beginning of your next turn, and then you turn this card face down. And then when we turn it face down, it flips to this side, and it says, Exhausted, remove this card from the game. This is a one-time effect. Um, but not bad, right? You have this always sitting out in your entire game, um, be able to basically absorb any damage if you think you're going to take some. And then it also has the Omni Beam. Use at the end of your turn if you didn't attack. Deal unpreventable triple hit against a hero or a villain or henchman in your, your or an adjacent location. Then you are KO'd and turn this face down. Oh, interesting. So there's all these defense abilities and stopping abilities. Or basically you can do one like big giant final attack with them. Um... And I guess this also just exhausts it and it breaks it. it makes sense because you're KO'd. That's kind of cool, right? Like, I really just, like, we have to get rid of this henchman. Or the villain has this. I can set someone else up. You can definitely take them out with that. So that is pretty fun there. Alright. Then we are going to get our next character. We have Hercules, the Olympian, the Lion of Olympus. Um, so why is Hercules in this set, you might ask? Because Hercules was part of the champions uh, with the Hulk for a while. Plus, he's just, you know, big beefy god character. We need some more 
you know, you're gonna have someone go up against the Hulk, why not grab the son of Zeus, um, and all his, all his might. So he's been an Avenger, so that's nothing new there. Um, there's back to his card. Uh, every time I've read, read comics with Hercules, I've always, I always love him as a character. I think he's pretty fun because he's he is the cocky, arrogant demigod you'd think he would be, and especially in a world full of superheroes. Um, all right, so he has moving attack, double attack, heroic attack, attack. Wild and double wild. So he's a lot of some decent attack cards. Um, all right, then he has the Olympian ability, which is just wild. He can do what he wants. Now, he has a special ability being a god. Is he has options. So most guys get get whatever's on the bottom of their card. Some have one, some have two. Some most, he has an or. So whenever you play this card, you choose to either move or do heroic. And then while well, it's in the lineup, if anyone uses this card... They choose which one. Um, so you don't get both options, but it's neat that you at least get... He has Wild already for himself. It's pretty crazy, but then you get an option on how you want to play the next card. So he's got two of those. He's got another Olympian, but he's got Move or Attack, and then a Move or Attack. And then he's had two cards for his starting hand. So just to start out with some special abilities... He has almost invulnerable. As long as this card is faced up in the storyline, you may ignore one damage during each villain turn. And kind of like we just said, Iron Man has one that you didn't need to always play. This one you almost want you to play as soon as possible. Um, and then we also have Immortal. As long as this card is faced up in the storyline, when you recover from being KO'd, draw one extra card. So cool. So he's basically like... He, like Hulkbuster, is going to do damage. He's going to have the ability to absorb stuff. Now, he doesn't, of course, get any... Um, get any sort of equipment because he's a god. He doesn't carry around weapons. All right. Now, we're going to go into our heroes and our anti-heroes. So, we'll get the hero version first, and then we'll come back and look at the villain right away. Um, just so we can kind of keep the same character there. So, we're going to get... Another god, we have the god of war, Ares. His big old mohawk helmet, uh, his axe, his sword. Uh, there's another sword on the ground there, he's just kicking the crap out of something. I'm not sure what he's standing on off the top of my head, I can't make it quite out. Um... But I do love the action pose. Plus his big long flowing hair. Uh, what's really funny about him is because in the comic books again. Kind of Hercules he was um, around. He's a god you know playing with villains and heroes and everything. But he's also he's part of the Dark Avengers for a while. With Norman Osborn. All right, and there's his card of course. But he's always one of them guys that's also like so cocky he can take out anybody because he's a god. Um, so I think we have is that technically our third full god pantheon because we have these two and then we have Hercules or uh, Thor. Um, and you could argue Loki on there as well. So you can always make a god team. We're working on making the god squad here. So he has heroic uh, move attack, heroic attack. Move attack. Move heroic. Attack. Single wild. Double wild. So again, like these other guys. There's a lot of attacking cards in this set. Um, then he has a special ability. Final blow. Discard one, ca discard one card of the bottom of your deck to either defeat one hench from your location or triple attack there. Nice. Um, and then we have the God of War. So he's going to get two copies of this. We kill like Hercules, give you either move or attack on the bottom. On the next villain turn, heroes may redirect any damage dealt to them by the by the villain. First to a henchman, if present, or to any thug in their location. Nice. Yeah, so basically just have him take damage from villains, stick with them, and then that way he can redirect it. And he does have a starting hand card as well. 
It should be immortal as long as this card is faced up in the sky and whenever you recover from being KO'd, drawing extra card. So just like Hercules. Um, which makes sense. Alright, then we have him being an anti-hero. He also has a villain version. Kazil, he is the god of war, so sometimes he gets angry and you have to fight him. To zoom back out just a bit to see his full card. I'm going to set him down here. So we have the back of his card. So he does have a special setup ability. Uh, turn all starting thugs into civilians across all locations. And if you're playing him as a supervillain, heroes start with two extra heroics. Alright, so he has either 6, 7, or 7 for health. Special rule, if there are any thugs in Ares' location, he ignores 1 damage each turn. A hero in a location with two or more crisis tokens can spend a heroic to re remove one crisis token there. Bam. Deal two damage to one hero in area's rotation. Compare the number of thugs in area's rotation to the number in the opposite location. Place one crisis token in a location with the least number of thugs. Tiger locations get one token each. So he wants to get lots of thugs out. Overflow if there are any civilian thugs tokens can't be added. Deal 1 damage to a hero in each location adjacent to that location. And villainous plot. If the heroes lose at any time, if 2 or more locations have 3 crisis tokens or 1 location has 4. Cool. So, yeah, this is going to keep happening every time he bams. Um, you're going to place a crisis token in the location with the least number of thugs. Um... And then it slowly build up. So you want to keep trying to take out thugs over and over and over. Until you can eventually defeat him. Awesome. Alright. I'm going to drop this back down. We have his threat cards. So let's see what those guys do. He's got Inflamed Spirits. Which are all six of his cards. Which all do the exact same thing. So I'm not going to show off each one. Um... So, Inflamed Spirits has, whenever he lands on this spot, turn one thug, or one civilian's location into a thug. If there are no civilians, add one to this location. So, every time he lands somewhere, he's basically going to be recruiting more people to his cause. Um, neat. I do wish they had uh, a thing in this game where they had little, like, little text being like, Hey, this is his thematic reason on why he's doing this stuff. Be kind of nice. Alright. So, we're going to kind of fly through there. Move regular basic movements. He has move one. He can move two. Moves four. Moves five. He's got another move one. Two. Three. And five. Then he has his special ones. He's got two copies of Divine Wrath. Discard all civilians in area's location. In each location, deal damage. Among the heroes in allocation equal to the number of thugs there. And then he's got God of War. Move clockwise to the next location with any heroes. And then bam. Uh, put one cleared threat back into play. In the next clockwise location without a threat. So he's going to bring back his spirits. Uh, then his other one is the same thing. He just moves counterclockwise instead. So, uh... Fairly straightforward villain, right? He's just going to be trying to get thugs out. He's going to move around trying to damage you or play more thugs. Um, pretty cool. Alright, let's hop in to our next character. We have the Sentry. Uh, Bob Reynolds. So, the Sentry was an interesting character when he came out. Um, they first announced him, I think, oh, was it 2000? Uh, he was supposed to be brought back like he was a character that, like, oh, people forgot about. Like, he's this long-lost character. He's a big um, kind of joke with everybody, with Marvel and some of the comic book magazines, like Wizard. He's like, oh, there's this old character that was created way back when everyone just forgot about. Uh, but instead, he's a new character. But the idea of being in the comic books, he was so powerful um, and threatening that he hid himself away from all the other heroes, erased all their memories, and then now he came back. Um, but he's one of the few people that can physically compete with the Hulk. Um, he's basically God-tier superpowers. He's got basically Superman of the Marvel Universe. 
uh, for what he does. The Man of a Thousand Sons, I believe is what his nickname is. Um, but yeah, he uh, can also usually calm the Hulk back down. Like Bruce Banner will work with him. So they sent him to try and calm down the Gladiator Hulk. But he's got these tentacles on the bottom because he has a dark side in him called the Void. Um, which can come out and it's like the, if his, his main power is based off the sun, that power is based off the darkness. Um, oops, so we want to grab his deck here. So he actually has his regular deck there, there's Sentry. Um, so he'll have his normal hero deck, but then he also has a special Void Identity deck. So, he kind of has a lingering threat, and we'll see what that does in just a moment. Alright, so we have move attack, double attack, double heroic, heroic attack, wild, second wild, and a double wild. So, he gets an additional wild in there. And then he has power sharing. Another hero may immediately... Um, Wild twice, then place two crisis tokens on the dark ent entity card. Interesting. Uh, uncontrolled power. Uh, gain a wild, then place one crisis token on the dark entity. You need just to move. Uncontrolled power, even more. Is it, I just want to have the picture like ramped up more. But you get three wilds, then place three crisis tokens on the dark entity. And he has an uncontrolled power with two. Uh, so there's a one, two, and a three. Um, and now, I believe... Yes, yeah, so these are all normal. And he does have a starting card hand. Uh, it says, almost invulnerable. As long as this card is based up on the start line, before you take damage, you may draw a card from your deck equal to the amount of damage you will take. Then place the same number of crisis tokens on the entity card token. Or card. Um, Alright, so then he has this Dark Entity special card. Drop this down here quick. At the end of any turn, if there are three or more Crisis Tokens on his card, discard all of them and reveal the top card of the Void deck. The Void. Um, and then the other applies effect, then put the card back on the bottom of the deck. So yeah, you're going to play stuff, and you're going to play his more powerful cards, you're going to put Crisis Tokens on there, and basically it gives eventually... Every time it does it, more and more gets to the point where he's going to release his dark side, so you don't know when it's coming. Um, which is kind of why he started hiding away. Uh, so he's going to have Hollowness. On your next turn, you must forfeit one move action if available. Unrestrainable Force. Each hero must discard one action token or take damage. Descent into evil. Bring one random clear threat back into play. You go location without a threat. Starting with your location and going clockwise. If not possible, accelerate the next building turn by one. A violent outburst. Another hero takes two damage. Void takeover. Another hero is immediately KO'd. And overwhelming darkness. You are immediately KO'd. So you can get... Oh, you lose a move token. Oh, that sucks, but that's not terrible. Or you have to put a threat back into play. Uh, depending on who you're fighting against, that might not be so bad. You might be able to deal with it. Um, but yeah, immediately tailing someone else or yourself could be bad. So it's kind of a gamble on what you're going to get. Um, and it does mean you play your more powerful cards to get you a bunch of wilds. Um, at the risk of one of these abilities popping out. Or do you stay at the safe route? So he's kind of an interesting character, and that's, you know, the way that's going to work. Um, Alright, then we'll set him back down, and we will have his, his villain card. Because, uh, yeah, he gets to be a villain, so this is kind of, this is, I love this because when they change him to the villain, he actually just becomes the Void. So he's not the Sentry anymore, he's literally just the Void. Um, so... And they kind of show us, like, an energy on there. He's also, like, a black energy, but... Uh, so he doesn't have any special startup. Let's flip him over and see what the Void does. He has 5, 7, or 9 health. Um, special rules. The Void can't be damaged if there is an invulnerable token on the dashboard. Uh, 
Hero and Village location may spend heroes to discard the vulnerable token from the dashboard. When a hero is killed, the void doesn't activate its BAM. Instead, accelerate the next building turn by one, uh, if not already accelerated, because you could mul KO multiple people. Um, cool. And then he says, BAM, place the vulnerable token on the dashboard if there is any, then deal one unpreventable damage to each hero anywhere. And then overflow, if there are too many, turn all civilians in that location into thugs, then draw a master plan at face down to the strong. This is going to keep advancing the story. So he's basically getting more powerful. He's just trying to draw it to the end game as quickly as possible. All right, then we have his threat cards. So we're going to start with fighting a friend. As long as this threat is in play, the void can't be damaged or defeated. So, he already has his invulnerable token on him, which lets him prevent damage. And then you have these, which means you can't, you can't damage him either. So, you have to take out a lot of his stuff. And he's got two copies of that. He's got two copies of A Moment of Doubt. When he lands here, the void doesn't activate his bam. This turn, though, uh, this turn, though the threats are still... Placed as usual. Place one hero token from the pool on this threat. So basically as he lands here, gives you a brief moment of uh, hope. And then he has two copies of Infini Tendros. Bam. You give each crisis token to a hero in this location. Ah, oh, great. Hangout crisis tokens. Alright. So now unlike other guys, he does not have any um, standard movement cards. All his stuff is going to do stuff. So he's going to get... Uh, three copies of this tendril strike move clockwise to the hero or no, to the next location with the most empty slots tendril strike says for each crisis token they have each hero chooses to either take one damage or turn their earliest space of card in the starlight face down discarding this crisis token which definitely means for a lot of these characters even in this set they have them starting cards that you might want to play early because they give you extra defense or their invulnerability and the idea is he's going to start shutting those off right away. So, like, if you're facing the Void, um, you're probably not going to want to play them, guys, immediately. Because that'll be the first thing that gets turned off. Um, he's got three copies of Molecular Manipulation. It says, move clockwise to the next location with no heroes. One hero in any location takes one Crisis token. He's got... Three copies of Superhuman Alertness. Uh, clockwise, you hear location with no heroes. Um, he doesn't want to get into a battle with these guys. He's smarter than that. Uh, until the next villain turn, the Void ignores one damage from each hero. You, you already have enough you know, defense. He needs more. Um, and then he has, finally, he has three copies of the Shadow Army. Uh, clockwise, you hear of the most civilians. For now, civilians avoid the location with thugs, and each hero in location with one or more thug takes one damage. Um, crazy. So he's gonna be, uh, yeah, just doing some damage to you, preventing, um, trying to speed up preventive. So, again, pretty, pretty much a straightforward guy overall. Alright, up next, we have the big boss of the sect, the Hulk. So here we have Gladiator Hulk. So he's got his big old armor on. Uh, yeah, you have him definitely fight with Korg from the base game. So they don't have... It's kind of interesting to overall say because they don't have uh, all of his allies in here. Um, but you could definitely use Korg. And then technically, Silver Surfer. He was also one of the... Uh, combatants in this Scar Arena. Um, although it's not the same version as the one that we get to see play as. It is a version. And there is his picture, of course. So what does good old Gladiator Hulk do for us? I also love that he keeps the fist icon that the original Hulk has. They just gave him, like, a glove. Uh, so he has move attack. Move Move heroic, and there's some of his other um, 
his other team, so I believe that's Sierra in the middle, uh, the Brood No Name, the Brood Queen, and Hiram, if I remember right. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely probably see when we get to his uh, villain version. Uh, double attack, a wild, and double wild. So then he has payback here. If you have one or two cards in hand, you get double attack in your location. So having less cards, you get to do some more damage. Warbound pack. Until the beginning of your next turn, each time another hero in your or your engagement location takes one or more damage, you gain an attack token um and then he has heroic break obedience doesn't attack if you defeated a henchman this turn and gain a wild token at the end of the turn oh that's nice the uh warbound leader uh attack and then each other hero may attack their location cool one on one clash deal an attack Number of attacks to a single target location equal to 5 minus the number of cards in your hand. Your target can't be damaged until, again, until your next villain turn. So basically you can't pile on someone, but that's actually pretty fun. And then lastly we have, uh, I think I keep saying Sierra, it might be Kyra. My queen, each time you attack this card, deal one additional damage to the same target. So again, another big beefy guy that's going to do a lot of attacking. All right, then we have him as a villain, but when he becomes a villain, he goes from Gladiator Hulk into the World Breaker Hulk. This is when he came to Earth and he started trying to stomp everybody. So special setup, uh, place the Rage card close to the player, uh, player area, two move tokens on it. So we'll see what that does in just a sec. He has, look at this, he has 7, 10, or 12 health. Special rule. When a hero without an obedience disc token, those are these guys here, um, is KO'd, World Breaker Hulk doesn't act as damage. Instead, give one hero the obedience disc token. Uh, heroes with an obedience disc token must turn the card they just played in the starling face down at the end of their turn. Oh, so they still get to activate, just nobody gets to use their abilities. Another hero may spend a hero in a location of the hero with an obedience disc to discard it and add one threat token to the clear clear mission threats. Um, nice. So here we have Bam resolve the rage card, then deal two damage to one hero in World Breaker Hulk's location. Overflow. If you overflow, deal one damage to one hero in that location and each adjacent one in Villainous Plot. If the heroes lose, they all have obedience discs at the same time. So all he wants to do is keep putting his obedience discs on, guys. Um, that's all he's going to hero with all your obedience discs is killed. He's going to put one on there. So that's the main way. Otherwise, you want to constantly keep trying to, trying to remove them. All right. So he's going to start with this rage card. So we have rage. Makes sense. It's the Hulk. Uh, it says, World Breaker Hulk is in a location with no heroes. Remove one move token from here. And it starts with two. If possible, and move him to one location towards the closest hero without an obedience disc. Repeat this until he re re reaches a location without any heroes. Um, or there are no more move tokens there. Uh, so yeah, he'll keep, so basically just to keep trying to jump around until he finds... Uh, location without an obedience, obedience disc. Um, or he finds a location. Uh, closest hero with all which. He's going to try and move towards them. Cool. Awesome. Then we have his threat cards. So like we mentioned, we're going to have uh, Korg. Um, oh, I did say that wrong. That wasn't no name. That was Meek before. Um, we have Korg. Uh, here is deal two damage to one hero in this location. First henchman of the set, too. We have Meek. Um, Meek of the Unhived, I believe. He has a BAM. Add one move to the Rage, to rage card. Then here's our no name, the Brood Queen. Deal one damage to each hero in this location. And then he has... So we didn't get Hero for some reason. I don't know why. 
Uh, we have three copies of Memories of Kyra. Uh, when he lands here, this turn, the World Breaker Hulk's BAM deals one additional damage. This threat can't be cleared, moved, or removed from play by any means. So he's always going to have these three in there. He just has to deal with that. Um, and that's where I come back to this. It says, uh, a hero can spend a hero token in a location with a hero with an obedience disc to discard one threat to the clear threat missions. Because otherwise you only have the three um, henchmen to beat. There's no actual way to remove threats from the board. Um, in general, so this is a way how you would do that with him. Uh, because you have to remove three of them. Alright, then we're going to have his main deck. So he has two copies here of Building Rage. World Breaker Hulk recovers one health for each base up Building Rage card in the storyline. You can't start go above the starting value. Add two move tokens to the Rage card, then add one. Civilian to every location except World Breaker Hulk. So the first time you played it, he'll get one health back and add two tokens. The second time, he'll gain two and add four. Uh, then he has some more basic movements. He can move one. Uh, another one, but one for thugs, one for civilians. Kind of same thing. He has a two for each. A three for each. A four for each. And a 5 free. So he doesn't have a lot of special cards. Because his whole thing is just bouncing around the board. Doing damage to everybody. Right? That's his entire thing. He just wants to bam on people. So he's resolve the rage card. Deal 2 damage to one hero in his location. So he's going to constantly try and move. And then get on them. Otherwise, he's going to be trying to just place his obedience tokens on characters. Um, by KOing them. So he tails them, they get a disc. Great. Awesome. So that was all of our main sets. We have one last character to look at, and that is the one again that was Kickstarter exclusive. Um, so we get one more hero, which is always tied very closely to Hulk. Dr. Leonard Sampson, um, who is powered by Gamma. Uh, is also a psychiatrist. He's Hulk, Hulk Bruce Banner, psychiatrist. Kind of some of the other heroes. I was funny because he's in this outfit. So, here's his outfit. We're looking at his picture. He's got a red t-shirt on. And he's got like a spike belt. Yeah, he's the superhero psychiatrist. Um, and he's got that green hair. So, that's pretty cool. We're going to get an additional hero out of him. Alright. Uh, we're going to have move. He gets to run got an attack, move attack, uh, there's doing therapy with the Hulk, move a heroic, double attack, so again, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of attackers in this set, so if you're looking for attackers, this is a good set for you, heroic, double heroic, and then he has heroic awareness, distribute two heroic tokens from the pool amongst other heroes, uh, Gamma Energy Drain. You may turn another hero's card with a special effect and throwing face down if you do gain a wild. Nice. So, like, yeah, earlier earlier on, this is going to be super great, but later on, it can be helpful. And he's got another one that, except he gains a hero look on the bottom, and one there that he has attack. Uh, his last one is Skilled Psychiatrist, which this also has starting hand cards. He gets to start with this. As long as this card is based up in the storyline, all heroes in your locations can't be forced to play their cards randomly or face down. So that's kind of neat. So if you're playing against a deck that you know that's going to have that, you can use it to help me mitigate some of those abilities or effects. Um, awesome. So that's what we have for this set. Uh, yeah, so this is definitely, yeah, if you want to pick this up, you're going to get a lot of characters here that have a bunch of attacks some cool new villains are you know nothing crazy tricky just more straightforward stuff with a lot of neat muscle if you're looking to beef up your characters a little bit all right see you guys later bye